Good morning. This is the Great Basin Prescribed Fire Briefing, Wednesday, November 1st. Looking at the fire map, lots of prescribed burning going on where you see the purple circles all up and down across much of the Great Basin, taking advantage of this prolonged period of fairly dry weather, especially in central and southern areas. You can see precipitation on the left uh, the past seven days, minimal to nothing in the southern half of the Great Basin. Locally light uh, to some moderate amounts as you do head into the higher terrain of Idaho and Wyoming. You can see the percent of normals on the right-hand side. You can also see the 100-hour fuels quite dry, upper single digits in this dark gold area, which continues to creep slowly northwards. And most of the rest of the area is in the low uh, teens, which is pretty good for prescribed burning. 1,000-hour fuels also especially dry down in the Spring Mountains area, uh, just south of Ely also. Otherwise, uh, low teens on the 1,000-hour fuels, and they do come up a bit as you head further up into Idaho and Wyoming, where they've had recent precipitation. On the satellite imagery, you can see the main storm track, uh, mostly north of us, pushing into the Pacific Northwest, leaving California, Nevada dry, but spokes of moisture pushing into parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and far northern portions of uh, northeast Nevada and parts of Utah. That'll be the trend the next couple of days, but clear and warm to the south. And you see that on the left-hand side here, the upper level map, where the moisture in the green is streaming in with precipitation and where it's quite dry down south and kind of the intermediate zone in the area in black. Now, the ventilation index, which is a combination of transport winds and mixing heights, not that great today. A little hazy out there. Um, as you would expect under high pressure, there's more downward motion with the mixing heights, and um, the winds are not as strong. And, of course, you see here on the left, surface winds near calm, where you see areas in the blue, and just a little bit in the... Uh, 6 to 10 mile an hour range where you see the areas in yellow to light green. You can see the relative humidity. Very dry down south. Bone dry. Upper single digits down there. Do get into the teens, which is still dry this time of year across central areas. And 30 to 40% in the north, north. But overall, pretty good dry conditions for burning off some of that surface fuel. Transport winds also fairly light. You can see them a little bit more pronounced in uh, some of these areas of yellow and green. Uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 miles an hour. Mixing heights, not that great. Uh, the best we can find is these areas in yellow, about 3,000 feet above ground level, but mostly one to 3,000 feet uh, for the most part. Now, the area of high pressure stays centered over us, but it starts flattening out as more storminess pushes into Idaho and western Wyoming. Uh, you can see a little bit of improvement in the overall ventilation index. You can see the transport winds picking up a little bit in uh, the north but still um, dr uh, very light winds down south. You can see the humidities, again, bone dry in the south and progressively coming up uh, as you head further north. The transport winds do pick up with some of that storminess up in the north. You see some spokes of orange. Those are speeds of uh, 25 to 30 miles an hour in some areas, maybe 40 up in the Tetons. But then once you get south of the I-80 corridor, transport winds fairly light. Mixing heights may be coming up just a tad, but still mostly 1,000 to 3,000 feet above ground level. Now on Friday, you can see, uh, again, we're in that pattern where there's another storm now moving into parts of California. High pressure kind of shifts further westwards and northwards in the Pacific Northwest. See a bit more white on the map. So the overall ventilation or dispersion index improves. There's a little bit more wind. There is a little bit better mixing heights coming in through here. Um, overall precipitation, other than a few scattered spokes of a few hundredths of an inch here in a light green, most of it in the mountains of Idaho and western Wyoming. Now, as we go into Saturday, the storm system that approaches California will deepen. You see this dark green area pushing further south, covering most of the Great Basin. Should see some light to locally moderate precipitation. See the ventilation index on the right. And that ventilation index improves tremendously as we go into Sunday, um, as we get a bit more storminess, a bit more upper-level winds. And again, you see these storms pushing into the northern half of the Great Basin Monday and Tuesday. So it still stays dry, mainly south of the I-80 corridor, but from there northwards, uh, definitely more moisture. Now here's precipitation. This is Saturday morning through Monday morning. You can see it mainly in the northern half of the Great Basin. Some of these amounts in the blue here, um, half inch to an inch, and most, most of this will be in the form of snow. So about five to 10 inches of snow, higher terrain of Wyoming and Idaho. And similar story, again, this is uh, Monday through Wednesday, um, again, preset mostly in the north, and this is what 
we get when we combine all seven days. So at some point, we may start getting too much snow, too much precipitation in the north for anything other than pile burning. Uh, but it stays dry in good burning conditions, mainly south of the I-80 corridor. 8 to 14, the outlook, November 8th to the 14th, warmer than normal across most areas. We continue with drier than normal conditions for much of the south. Most of the storminess stays just to the west, maybe touching far western Nevada. Um, now, looking a bit further down the road, we are in a strong El Nino. Uh, you see the sea surface temperatures off the uh, South American coast. This is North America up here, and these are the warmer than normal waters. And that affects storm track, typically during the winter months, bringing more storminess to much of the West Coast. And then across at least the southern third of the Great Basin, sometimes even more, brings drier weather overall to the northern portion of the Great Basin and the northern Rockies. Uh, so far, we're actually in an opposite type of pattern, but we do expect, uh, this is the uh, Climate Prediction Center's forecast for December, January, and February, their winter forecast, below normal precip across northern areas. Doesn't mean you won't get precipitation, but just not quite as much as normal. But from near the I-80 corridor on southwards, it is expected overall to be wetter than normal. So we'll see how that plays out. And from predictive services, we also issue the um, four-month outlook. We show the warmer than normal conditions for October, November, uh, and for November, maybe above normal precipitation for much of Utah, the Arizona Strip. Um, but we do see a trend towards drier than normal conditions across parts of Idaho and Wyoming as we go November, December, and into January. So we'll see how that trend plays out. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.